hello again. I'm always adjusting cameras as you've noticed. I talk about carving a lot, but I haven't shown you very much that has to do with carving. And once again, I want you to know that we're representing the Okefenokee Heritage Center, and specifically the Art Guild. Carving is an art. Now, I may not be there, but there are people who can make sophisticated carvings that look like life. And the way I got into carving was through the Charleston, South Carolina Wildlife Exhibition. And if you've never had an opportunity to go there, then I would suggest you do so. It's every second weekend in February, I believe that's right. And they have wildlife art, uh, two-dimensional art. Fantastic, beautiful, a lot of it. And they also have a lot of three-dimensional, which is carving and sculpture, that sort of thing. But anyway, I got into it a long time ago, and it has proceeded and proceeded and proceeded, and I told my wife when I first got into it, I think I can do that. And 20 years later, I'm still saying, I think I can do that. And I haven't arrived there yet, but I thought today that I'd show you a couple things that I have done. And then I thought I'd show you a little bit about the method of doing it. So we're kind of going to bounce around a little bit. And I hope it'll be informative and I hope you'll enjoy it. As we look at these couple of items, don't pay any attention to all the other junk that you see around and about. But this is a blue jay I did last year. And it's... Uh, basswood on tubing and the leaves are made out of foil and they're made to represent the holly tree. They do a pretty good job. It was difficult to paint them. The paint didn't turn out the way I would like to, for it to have done. But anyway, one of the major project, problems that I have in, is trying to do feet. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to do feet on a bird. This other bird, of course everybody will recognize it. It's a red-headed woodpecker. Throughout the south you can find them. So I do do some real carving once in a while. The bird that we replaced there in the front is a least bittern. I got to find a habitat and make something for it so that it becomes a little bit better represented in, in nature. And another one that I have in my hand, which I will put up here, that's a saw wet owl. And I did a real good job on the carving of it, and I did a good job with the feathering and uh, getting the anatomy correct and that sort of thing, but I'm at the stage of painting and I may ask Joel Mitchell, who has painted a barred owl for me, to do that. I don't do well with the painting. It, it, it's a really a challenge for me, but most of what I try to do are like the birds that you see. As you, if you'll notice, the coloring is, is not a mixed or type of coloring. It's just uniform red, uniform black, and you just fill in the blank areas. So anyway, those are some of the things that I've done. I've got a lot more. I started out doing ducks, but ducks are big, and the wood became very expensive, and to do a duck today would probably cost over $50 just buying the wood. So I moved into birds, and I really enjoyed them a lot more. And what I want to do now is show you some of the things that would go through to try and do that. I thought we'd start out looking at the bluebird. This is an eastern bluebird. And this is a book that my wife gave me some time ago. And I've done more than one bluebird from it, but this is the basic pattern. And it's not that big a deal. We'll simply put some carbon paper under it and we'll draw a pattern just a rough pattern and then we'll take a piece of wood and we will put that rough pattern on this piece of wood <clears throat> and go to the bandsaw and cut it out and then when we got it cut out this of course 
is finished pretty well, but it will be rough, just a rough block. And if you don't have a bandsaw, you can buy the rough cutout and you can finish the detail on it. Then we'll look at this. We got a pair of calipers as we work, and we'll try to use them as we move along with it to measure the wings and measure the tail and the length of the tail and the length of the bill and uh, how far the eyes are maybe from the top and try and get those dimensions to match up with our wood as we use this little tool here and as we use this bigger one to relieve the wood off to end up with a good shape that is worth trying to do the final work on. Now there's a lot of grinding in between this, this and that. So bear in mind that. And then we got to work with putting the eyes in. The eyes, there are two things about the eyes. You want the eyes to be straight this way. When you look at them, you want them to be straight across here. Then when you look down on them, again, you want them to be across there and not one behind the other. So if you're not careful, you'll get one behind the other, or you get one above the other. And these look pretty well, pretty well in line, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. It's just a matter of getting some eyes and put them in there. I lost one, so uh, it's down there in the floor somewhere, and I ain't found it yet. But anyway, after we get that, then we'll have to draw, draw the feather pattern and the feather grouping on this bird. And of course, all of this is just bare. And then we begin to take up these little bits, and we begin to define the feathered group, and get the feather groups in. And then after we get the feather groups in, we begin to take our calipers, and we begin to count how many uh, feathers would be in this particular group. And then we start drawing them in. And then after drawing them in, I burn them in. And once they're burned, then we can pretty well begin to really do some fine shaping on the bird. We can go down in here and make the, the groove deeper. We can burnish that, first of all, with a, uh, a burning tool. Then we can take our, our little micro motor tool with the right kind of bit on it, and we can deepen that and make it further in. I got to work some more on the tail, and I've got to work some more on the undertail. And uh, this this one I put, as I told you previously, I put a new head on. So we got to see how that head lines up, and I may have to have a little bit more plastic wood in here to smooth this out. But I think it's going to work out, and we'll just keep on working with it. And as you you as I previously said. It's really basic in color. You know, it's kind of blue, blue back, rust colored breast. So it's not going to be a difficult bird to paint. And I couldn't, I don't like difficult birds to paint. And as I said as well, I don't try and define all of this. This, this particular book is an excellent book because it's got so much detail in it to help you. Now, there are other books that you can buy. I got a ton of books. And it has patterns in it. It has it shows you how to put the patterns on, shows you how to grind, what to grind. So it's it's cookbook work. It's not something that I can run out there and grab. And now there are people that can do that and design and do it all just from my head. I can't do that. I don't, I don't have that ability. But just getting it out of a piece of wood and, and re refining it and shaping it. That can be a challenging enough. Let me show you another piece that I'm currently working on. And being from the Okefenokee region, you'll never guess what this is. <laughs> when I first did it, this is the second one on here. I showed it to my wife. She said, well, that's a great lizard. I thought, well, I believe she's right. So I had to come out and I started again. I grounded him off and flattened it off. And I don't, I'm doing this without, uh, this is the only pattern I have. 
that I'm working with and I found out that the eyes are almost perpendicular so that, that was a that was a bit of a different challenge I gotta work on the tail more the tails not defined enough and I'm just trying to stick something in there that creates foliage and I'd like to try to make this look like a log now how this turns out I have no idea but you know, we're, we're out here grinding wood and we're out here uh, working at it. If you want to see somebody that can really do this kind of thing, I urge you to go on YouTube and look at Stinnett Sticks. S-T-I-N-N-E-T-T, -T, I think. Stinnett Sticks. That man carves canes. And he carves, he carves snakes on the cane and it's almost unbelievable what you see on that cane. I can promise you if that thing was sitting on the counter and you walked in and didn't know it was there, you'd go sideways about six feet because he can produce uh, snakes, <laughs> gators. He's done all kinds of things on those walking sticks and it's just fantastic work. And he simply, he's an artist uh, because he'll do clay models before he starts after his drawing and that, that's, that's, that's an art. It's not just cookbook work, and most of mine's cookbook work. So, But it's interesting work, and I like it, and it, it's a great hobby. Uh, it's meant the world to me, and I'm out here in my shop by myself alone, and uh, my wife at time has been ill, and I didn't bother her. I was out here, not messing around in the house. So it's been good, it's been great, and I've enjoyed it a lot. So, if I can help you in any way, if I can do anything about it, the people at the Okefenokee Heritage Center sure know how to contact me, and you're welcome to give them a holler, and uh, they'll contact me, and we'll talk a little bit about it. I don't try to teach because I don't have that kind of depth of knowledge, and I don't desire to teach, but I'd be happy to talk about it. So, once again, representing the Okefenokee Heritage Center and the Art Guild, Thank you so much for being with me, and I hope you'll come back. We're going to do some more.